Today I'm Luke from Drifter and uh, here you're going to do another video for you. Show you a couple of things that I've been wanting to show you for quite some time and just one thing to another, I've been very busy and just haven't had a chance but um, good timing now so uh, yeah I wanted to run you through one of our or the first product <coughs> the first product that um, I first designed is the Drifter 200 and uh, so I've got a couple of them here today this is actually the the second one I ever made and a bit of a story behind it I'll quickly take you through it and Jake can chuck some photos up but I was drifting around Australia for a while a couple of years and working with horses up in North Queensland and uh, on some stations in the Gulf and then I went to America got a job as a mule packer or a wrangler as they call it over there and we take hunters and tourists into the Cascade Wilderness mountain range in Washington State and um, it was a brilliant job right up my alley, I really enjoyed it and uh, had an amazing time to learn how to pack mules. And uh, anyway, on the uh, back of the mules we used to carry these boxes and a guy called Jim Mountjoy, uh, he was a, a bushman over there and uh, he designed a couple of uh, boxes, they called them kitchen boxes and two of those used to go together and uh, would ride on the back of the mules. And there'd also be a couple of boxes uh, that were the ice boxes. They were lined in insulation, and we'd put frozen meat in there because we'd go into the mountains for a week, you know, a week at a time, ten days. And uh, we'd, we'd take tourists and hunters in and set up their camp, you know, guide them, taking fishing or hiking, or sometimes a lot of the time we're taking hunters in and they're doing drop trips. So we'd take them in, set them up, come back, pick them up in a week, and we'd set up these big. Uh, canvas tents for them, the big old square type tents, set up these, uh, you know, leave the, the boxes for, for like a fridge which is full of frozen food and also these two kitchen boxes. So the two boxes would sit side by side and the front of one of them would go between and form some bench and there's some drawers and things like that in there. So I thought that was a really good concept and uh, you know it's something that I that I'd realised I needed myself because just before that, before I went to America, I went around Australia with my brother and a good mate Dutchie and we didn't have any kitchen at all, had an old panel van. Um, we originally wanted to drive across Simpson Desert but all I had was a XD panel van so we had to sort of uh, drive around it. So we went up the Birdsville track, down the Streslecki, up the Udnadatta and the Tanama track in January in an old panel van with three guys. And anyway, we had no kitchen gear at all, no, not even a table. And it was, I remember I was in a pretty disorganised mess trying to prepare food and meals every day on the ground, in the sand. So I was sort of thinking we need some sort of camping kitchen. And uh, anyway, went to America, I saw these, uh, these pair of meal packing boxes. And I thought that's a great concept because it's, I like the size, it was about that size. And uh, anyway, I came home eight, ten months later and uh, I had the idea in my head and I designed this first single drifter camping box and uh, the idea was it held all of my gear and it folded out into a kitchen so that's where it came from. Now the first one I made um, I went to Broome and I left it with a friend up there and I don't know whatever happened to it, we can't find it but so it's sort of missing the number one unfortunately, but it wasn't much good anyway. This is the number two one that I made and it fixed a few design problems and it's it pretty much uh, stayed the same design as what it is today. So the idea was again twofold. Is one you've got to have somewhere to put all your gear and this box would go in the back of your truck. Right, just like that. So you chuck it in the back of your truck, all your gears in there. You'd lift it out sit on the ground and then you just fold it out so I'll show you how it works now this second box is when I came up with the idea of the bevel on the front and uh, that's worked really well and that bevel idea is still something that we use today for folding out our kitchens all right so as you can see, two legs come out, two shelves. And shelf that side. And that was it. So you can see, it's just 30 seconds. We've got a two burner stove fits inside. Got a drawer there. 
a cups and plates and you've got all your cooking gear in the rest of it now some of my original gears uh, gone but um, you can see you've got heaps of room for all of your kitchen equipment pots and pans and everything so that's all storage once you fold it out you've got your stove in the center and you've got most importantly bench space either side And that's it. So if you're going to prepare a meal, you've got yeah bench space either side. Not a bad height, about 800 high, and everything right there. So that was a concept that you know worked really well. And uh, yeah, I mean I built this second one. Um, that's all I did for three or four years. I was travelling some more and I uh, got a job as a builder's labourer. And then I always had this idea in the back of my head about whether I could. Uh, you know, it was an original idea, but I hadn't had any experience in business and wasn't sure how or whether I could sell them or not. And uh, I was in Tasmania traveling one time and I camped at a river bank in Tasmania somewhere. And uh, there's this lady who watched us set up. She saw me pull this kitchen out of the back of my old 47 series Troopy and set it up. And she had a Kimberley camper and uh, she'd been to all the shows, she knew about the camping industry and she came over to me and she goes, wow, that was amazing, I just watched you set up your little kitchen and you should sell that at the Rose Hill show. And I was like, well, what's the Rose Hill show? I'd never heard of it. I'd never heard of any camping shows. Anyway, she told me about it, so I came home and we um, looked them up and I found out there's a, a series of country shows, rural, rural scene promotions, and they did Maitland, Dubbo, Gosford. Um, so I went to the Dubbo show and took these little kitchens and built five of them and I didn't sell any but I, I swapped three for a canoe and uh, so I was pretty happy about that I loved my canoes and um, anyway so I thought I might give it another go and went to the mudgy field days and uh, but back then it was six hundred dollars for the site fee and for me as a builder's labourer that was most of my wage for the week and I bought you know another half dozen kitchens and I didn't sell anything so I thought, oh, it's, you know, I've just wasted a whole week's working just for the site for your loan, let alone diesel and all that. Didn't sell anything, so I pretty much thought, no, it's not going to work, really. And I thought, I'll give it one more go. So I went to the Gosford show and I sold five. Uh, five of those little boxes, just like this. So that sort of encouraged me. And, of course, I was keen as, you know, back in those days, you've designed something and if you're, I suppose, a bit of an entrepreneur, it's, it's, it's all about your dreams and your hopes, you know, and that's what keeps you going. And, um, you know, so anyway, I kept going and I, I sold five, went to the Port Kembla show, sold another six or seven, I think, and we basically ended up doing that for the next four or five years. Just building kitchens, originally my garage at home, just a double garage, going to the shows, selling them at shows. And, um, I mean, we did, we did well, we sold them. You know, we used to go to Adelaide show and sell 30. I, used to, I built a big trailer up and I could only, I fitted 30 kitchens like this in the back of my trailer. One time in Adelaide show, I sold 30, sold everything I had. Um, so, uh, but you know, it was a tough life because we were making them, you know, every day of the week really. What We're, we're doing a show every second weekend and uh, working all weekend, building these boxes, going to shows, selling them at shows, driving back, and we're going to shows all over the country, Adelaide, Brisbane, Melbourne, all over the place. So it involved a lot of travel and the shows are very expensive and we really didn't do make any money in five years. We worked every day, and uh, but Tommy paid for the show fees and diesel. There was nothing left. Because back those days, all we could get for a box like this was about 400 bucks. And they needed to really be 500, but I couldn't sell them for 500. So, and then, you know, that's another story, but I, uh, started building um, the kitchens for the camping trailers, the swing out. I might show that story another time. But uh, the design that I created in this original box led me to design the swing out kitchen on the trailers and the pull out return, the DPOR kitchen. And what we've got here behind me now is the, the result of all of that. So that's sort of what really got me going. Um, but it all started from this original box and this was the, the number two box. So I was talking to Buck the other day, good old Buck Rooney, um, up in uh, Marie in Innisfail. He's got a really good YouTube channel, Buck Rooney, and um, he he's doing a fan event um, in August at Tinaroo, Lake Tinaroo, a beautiful spot there in North Queensland. And Buck, of course, very passionate about um, 
being a Queenslander and especially in being North Queensland, he's really excited to host this Drifter fan event, which has become a big, big event now. Yeah, we're getting 500 people to the local one in Gloucester and um, Buck's very excited about hosting this uh, fan event up in um, Tinaroo. So anyway, he went there to sort things out and the lady who uh, was running the caravan park had one of these old boxes in, in a garage and um, yeah, it's, it's a really old one and it had been, I'm not sure if it was rotted out, I'm in North Queensland, very wet environment and it had rotted out on the bottom maybe a few white ants in there, I'm not sure, but uh, the bottom has sort of had some holes in it, and it, this is like 15 or 18 years old, so um, Buck sort of got a bit enthused about it, and he goes, he had a good look at it, and the first one he'd really seen, he goes, Luke, he had a chat to me, he said, you know, you really should um, promote these a bit more, and we actually haven't done a video on these before ever, um, just got busy with other things, and, um, you know, but we still make them and still sell them, and they're, you know, for tent camping, they're a great option, so, Anyway, I said to Buck, well, send that one down to me. You know, he, we, we got it picked up and freighted down, and I said, I'll fix it up. And because another uh, big milestone's coming up in the business, and that is that next year, we're in 2019 now, you know, mid-year, and um, next year's 2020. Now, we started the business in, in the year 2000. So that means we're 20 years old, the business, in 2020. So I've um, been thinking about that, and we've sort of got a slogan, you know, 20 years in 2020 which is a pretty cool slogan and it's one that not very many businesses around the world can really say because to achieve 20 years in business is not easy. You know, the statistics are only 1 or 2% for a company that starts and, and, and lasts, you know, even a few years, let alone 5 or 10 or 20. So it's a big thing to last 20 years in Australian manufacturing and also to have our anniversary in the year 2020 is, is, is really cool. So I said to Buck, uh, what we might do, I've been thinking about branding and um, what I wanted to do because, you know, to survive that long, um, this was our original kitchen and what better time to give it a new lease of life than, um, you know, 2020. So, this has just had a fresh coat of paint, so a little bit tight. And so, yeah, got the kitchen back, we sprayed it up, we made it like brand new, and um, this will last now another 20 years, no worries. So we're going to send it back to, to the lady who owns it at the Tindaroo Caravan Park, and, um, and it's like basically brand new. And we've put a new base in it, and we've put a new back and some new bits on the bottom but it's you know you hardly notice and it's as good as new now what we've also done is put a new drawer in here okay and if you can see that this is our new logo that we're going to bring out um, towards the end of the year ready for next year the drifter logo uh, 20 years in 2020 and there's a photo of um, uh, myself and Kaido so Kaido has become a big part of the business now he's almost turned 18 doing all of our CAD work and the fact that we've survived so long without anyone doing CAD is quite amazing and um, I don't know how we did it but having Kaido now doing the CAD work and a lot of the design and he's running a lot of the media and promotions and all sorts of things he's become a big part. Kaido's grown up with the business of course and I couldn't be happier or luckier to have a son that's um, you know happy and enthusiastic and he's so keen and passionate about what we're doing so I'm very very blessed that he's able to um, or that he wants to get involved and and not only that, he's, he's, he's a big part. He's, you know, again, he's doing all that CAD design. He's self-taught and um, very lucky. So Jake's filming today, but kaido has been filming, you know, most of the videos since he was nine years old and always been a big part. So, so I thought that was pretty cool that we could, um, you know, put our, our new brand that's coming up next year um, on these original Drifter boxes, the Drifter 200, which is our first product. This is what kicked us off, kicked the business off started our whole company and now we're going to brand these so next year every one of these we make next year is going to be branded and also it's pretty cool that it's laser engraved you know because such an old concept this box um, but we've got a laser etching machine that that brands that in so you know with the 2020 the old and the new and the start and and where we are today i think that's pretty cool
So, you know, these boxes are still for sale They're on the website. This suits a two burner stove. We do a wider one that fits a three burner stove. But as you can see, you've got really nice bench space. Stoves in the middle, you've got a nice drawer. Cups and plates, pots and pans, all your gears in there. You can have a plastic tub for washing up. Lots of bench space and a nice height as well. So, chuck in the back of your four wheel drive or your box trailer or your camping trailer for that matter. Set it up underneath your awning or, you know, with your tent and then you've got your camping kitchen. So it's two parts of storage for all your gear. You've got to have somewhere to put all your gear so it's all in there and also it's your kitchen as well. And sets up very quickly as well. So, you know, when I went to the shows for, again, first five years, this is all I did. Constantly setting up and down the kitchens and showing them it's a new concept so it's difficult to show um, you know a new concept to people and uh, you can see how easy that files up see how the legs tuck in the front there very simple box but again this is the first product I designed as I said and there is a lot of design in this um, to be able to get those legs inside, how they snap in, see how they just fit perfectly and you know the way that's set back, the bevel on there, so that all, look at that, so that locks itself in and the lid flips over. So you know from a simple concept in your head to actually getting that box designed and built is, is, is massive, there's so many concepts involved in that. The little brackets on the side and it's all very simple um, but it's a testament to the original design that uh, this is the basis for all of our kitchen designs still today and the fact that they still last lasting today and they'll last forever I mean literally you know rotten white ants got into this one from a wet environment and we just put a new base in it and it'll go for at least another 20 years no problem so uh, yeah quite an amazing concept and how it all started again this is the the number two model and the other thing too is we've numbered these every box uh, you know I built these on my own for first you know uh, three years I suppose and um, used to number each one there'd be a little number on the front here and uh, I used to sign underneath the drawer as well so I'll quickly show you this one we can do a canvas cover on them which is nice So it's pretty cool that if you, you know, a um, big fan of Drifter or you could use something like this, you know, um, this is a box that you could really get some good use out of. Again, we're still making them today. And um, this is really part of history as well because um, this is where it all started. So this is one we made... Um, couple of years ago this was number 234 so I've done the same and um, I've put this brand here was the original tag 234 okay that's what was on them and um, what I've done is look at that 11th of the 3rd, 19th, so I've, that's what I used to sign when I made them. And I've just done that recently, of course, when we touched it up and we made a new drawer with our new 20 years and 2020 logo. So, what we might do is we might, um, I'm not sure, raffle this or give this away as a prize. And, um, oh no, that's right, I'm going to send it up to Buck. So, I'm going to send this one to Buck Rooney. I'll send both of them up there and he can have a play with it and um, he wants to use it. So, uh, yeah, now you can see with an Oz tent as well, um, it's, it's ideal for an Oz tent. A lot of people are using Oz tents, and this little kitchen is, works really well for that um, sort of setup or any tent. So, I think, um, yeah, and also this is the two burner version. We do a smaller one that fits a one burner stove called the Drifter 100. We do a smaller, short one called the Drifter 100 Mini, and we also do a a wider one that suits a three burner stove called the Drifter 300. So they were our original products, uh, all starting from 
this one here. So, I think that's it, Jake. That's what we wanted to show. Um, where it all started, how it started, where the company came from. And that was all it, the original Drifter box. So we've done a lot of videos, I think 340, 350 videos. And we haven't shown our original box before, so there you go. It's all made out of plywood. And, uh, yeah. So I think that's it, mate. What do you reckon? Anything else? That's all. We're going to do a couple of other things to show you. These LED lights and stuff. But that's for another video, so... Righto. Well, Buckaroonie, thanks, mate, for uh, having that chat, you know, a few weeks ago. And, um, you know, we'll get these boxes back to you. And you can have a play with them and take it back to the lady who owns that box. She'd be uh, delighted, I'm sure, to have a, a box fully um, re remade and uh, back like new again. So, all right. Thanks for listening and uh, good on you.